Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be describing how uh, double wishbone system, uh, suspension systems work. And uh, before you watch this, if you don't know what, uh, about camber, I'd recommend watching my first video. I'll post the link in the description about what is camber, caster, and tow. Because it helps understand what these suspensions are for and what they can help do. So basically, uh, it's not too complicated, but basically what you do is you have a, a lower and an upper control arm that's uh, connected to the body of your vehicle. And uh, in connecting in between those two, on the outside here, you have your uh, wheel hub, and that's where you mount your tire on. And then connecting on the inside, uh, at the bottom could control, lower control arm up to uh, the body, you have your uh, shock absorber and your spring coil, uh, your coil spring. So basically your shock absorber uh, is what's absorbing that shock, mainly your uh, uh, coil spring is what's doing that suspension, and uh, whenever you go over a bump, your shock absorber is what's taking that energy and absorbing it to give you a smoother ride so that that energy doesn't go throughout your whole vehicle and give you a rough ride. And that's pretty much it on how they work. Uh, they used to, these lower and upper control arms, they used to be the uh, same size. And with the, when they were the same size, what that benefit was, was when you go over a bump on one side, your tire will stay the same. You won't lose any camber. But they started realizing in performance cars that uh, it's actually better to have negative camber. And uh, as I explained it in that my previous video on what camber is and why negative is good, I'll basically do it again a little short description is when you have negative camber where your tire is leaning inward, when you go around a corner, say you're going uh, hard on a corner, you're taking a hard left, your weight is going to shift to that side of the vehicle and that will cause this tire to make up for that little negative camber. So when you're in the corner a lot of your weight is on that side, this tire is no longer going to be negative, it's basically going to be uh, zero. And the more zero it is, the more contact you have with the road surface. And the more contact you have, the better handling when you're going around that corner. It allows you to take off quicker. So that's why the uh, shorter upper control arm allows for a camber change when cornering. It allows, because of it being shorter, it allows for that neck to have that benefit of the negative camber. Whereas when they were the same, you would have zero when you're going straight, but then when you're coming around the corner, you wouldn't have that benefit anymore. It would actually be the opposite. You'd have... Uh, less traction on the outside of the tire. And uh, that's pretty much it on most of them, on how it works with uh, how they allow that. The uh, pros and benefits of it uh, is uh, it allows for more uh, travel over large bumps. So unlike uh, the uh, McPherson strut, when you're going over a bump it doesn't really allow for that much uh, travel. But uh, double wishbones, it allows for more variance up and down. So if you're going over a bump like even maybe off-road with it, but again it allows for more variances up and down to allow that. Uh, and again, like I was basically saying earlier, it allows better handling due to that camber change. And uh, there's also, you can have more variance in uh, location of parts. So this is just a general one of these. There's a lot of different variations on how these look to allow maybe uh, when you're adding different parts to it, you can do a lot of change to it. So you can actually move this somewhere else as long as it's uh, connecting to the frame of the vehicle to allow for that suspension. But it, uh, again, as I stated, it basically allows for a lot more variances on where the location of these parts are. And uh, really the only negatives is basically money. They're more expensive. That's why performance cars use them and why performance cars are more expensive. Whereas cheaper cars like your everyday daily driver that you don't need the necessarily all that benefit because you're not going to be going around racing it around the corner so and it's cheaper. Uh, there's also more parts to it and because there's more parts there's more label uh, labor so uh, as as I was used to be a tech uh, these were not fun to work on pretty much any time whenever there's uh, more anything that we have more performance more better outcome of it it's more of a pain to work on and they, they, again, they can be a pain to work on because stuff will get in the way and they just are a pain. But uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Again, there's more, a lot of these are on performance cars to allow for those camber changes and uh, variance of where you want to put parts when you're modding it. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.